My name is Michael Adams. I'm CEO at SAGE, and SAGE is a national organization that focuses on advocacy and services with and on behalf of LGBTQ older adults. So SAGE's work around equity and, and racial equity more specifically started, I guess at this point, about, um, about five years ago. And it was um, an outgrowth of a strategic planning process in which we were having a conversation about the organization's values and recognizing that as an organization, we had done some pretty significant intersectional work in our advocacy, in our external um, advocacy work, but we really had not done the hard work to focus in on what equity and racial equity meant at SAGE as an organization, including internally. And then in fact, we had not built the shared understanding across the organization of what racial equity is and what our commitment is as an organization and, and, and how it fits with our mission to improve the quality of life for LGBTQ older adults. And so that was an aha moment that there was a lot that we had not yet done and we'd been more externally focused than otherwise. And so we, and so we launched on this journey that is now five years old and that, and that began actually with um, the spending the better part of the year in the staff and the board working together to craft a, a statement of principles um, around diversity and equity that is, and then of course we've moved much beyond that since then. At the start it was very focused around outcomes and, and the statement is focused on outcomes and, and big picture and it was also a long dialogue and in a sense negotiating process, right? Especially at two levels of the organization between board and staff and the, the statement that we started with at the staff level and the statement that we ended up with is quite different, um, much less specific. And again, I think that it's, it, it's going to have to be a future step in our work to recraft that statement to you know, take it to the next level. But nonetheless, it was, we, we learned a lot even in undertaking to craft it at the beginning. It was a process that, um, that began with a board discussion and then proceeded to a staff discussion and then proceeded to a staff working group um, crafting a draft of the statement um, that was then shared with a board working group and then substantially reworked and then there was a lot of back and forth and dialogue to arrive at a place that felt like a good, acceptable step forward. We always understood that the statement of principles is just that, and it doesn't mean anything unless you actually bring it to life. And so once we had you know, been through the process, the board as our governance body adopted the statement, we had a big celebratory moment, and then it is, okay, what now? Um, and so we started trying to imagine and envision what it meant to lean into that statement and to develop a body of work to um, execute against it. And um, had some conversations with our consultant about how we might structure the next phases of the work. And over the course of those conversations, which involved a number of staff people, a number of um, folks from the board, we came to realize that that fit, that partnership with that consultant had worked well for the statement of principle phase, but it wasn't going to be the ideal fit for the next phase of the work. And so then we needed to um, you know, find other consultants to work with and set about doing that and ultimately found a couple of really amazing uh, amazing people.